We running? Okay, hey guys, uh, this is my latest uh, version of uh, the waste oil burner that I've been redoing for the last five or six years. And uh, this is pretty much where I, where I ended up and I wanted to go over with you guys everything. I have a lot of questions about how, why, and when. And uh, I'm gonna go through the process of showing you everything and then we're gonna light it up and kind of show you some stuff about that. So the first thing I wanna show you is the burn bowl down here. This is actually a Freon tank. We cut the bottom out of the Freon tank. This is consumable. This is going to wear out. It's going to get holes in it. So you have to replace this. You also have to dump this out every once in a while because it gets when the oil burns, it leaves dirt, the debris in the oil. And so you have to dump that air out every once in a while. This bowl goes up in the bottom of this tank. There's about a quarter inch space all the way around the bowl, and the bowl just all you need to bowl up in there is about a quarter inch to a half inch. That's it. And so you can just use a spacer. And also, you can light this with dirty rags. Uh, like if you're trying to get rid of some oil rags, instead of using uh, diesel, you can just put your oily rags in there and get rid of them. And that's another way to start the fire. So I'm going to start this with oily rags. Uh, and so you can just slide this up in the bottom. And then put a spacer in there, like so. Okay. Just kind of get it where it's staying in there. And so that's done. Now, the concept of this. You have this one tube right here that's on a 45 all the way into the bottom of the tank. And that at the end of this pipe right here is about even with the bottom of the tank. And so the burn bowl actually slides up kind of around that a little bit. And I usually 45 that, that pipe so I get kind of good air. And you want that pipe kind of on this side of the burn bowl so it's not all the way on that side. So you got plenty of activity where you burn in the bowl, a lot of airflow. And so this. This pipe right here is your visual pipe to look down and see how your oil is doing, see how your fire is doing. It's also your light port. Okay, that's it. I don't use that for anything else now but the light port <coughs> and a visual port because if you can see right straight into the bowl. Now this other tube that I've added is another, this is your turbo tube or your air induction tube. So I've got this down here lower than my oil coming into my side pipe. So when my oil comes in, it comes across my turbo air and causes turbulence and flashes the oil in it. It like mystifies the oil so it burns better. And uh, that's that was kind of the latest thing I tried to do. And so this works really well now. Okay, so then I've got the oil coming up, feeding from two tanks, reservoirs, and regulated by a ball valve that feeds into the oil and it comes down, goes in the sight tube, down across the turbo tube, flashes, it goes to the tank and just ignites. That's what keeps ignited. So um, these are these are uh, propane tanks for a barbecue grill that I've cut the top out and added three quarter valves on the bottom, and I've got them tied together so that I can get more volume. And then now this is a actual uh, a forge blower fan, which I've found now, which I'm using. These work really well. It's a forge blower fan. Uh, I get it from Amazon, it's about 89 bucks. And I just do a two and a half by an inch and a half rubber bushing and, and I'm good to go. So uh, that's the basic concept. You also have a drain port on the bottom of these tanks to get to drain your oil. And it's also act as a water separator. So if you got water or antifreeze in your oil, water and antifreeze goes to the bottom. And so you can use this as a water separator because you don't want to have water up here coming into your burn because it'll put your fire out. So you can use it for a water separator just make sure your water's not any higher than this right here. And, and you'll get an idea of how often you gotta drain your water out. Usually once you get all your oil working good, there's not much water in it. But if you get a new batch, people put antifreeze in and all kinds of stuff. So there's a drain valve on each one of these. Okay, now starting this thing. <coughs> Blow torch is a handy to anything to have. And brake cleaner. Not starting fluid, because you can blow your ass up if you use starting fluid, okay? It's very lethal. So the easiest way we found to light these things now is to go ahead and shoot down a little bit of brake cleaner, coat the pipe, and then it just ignites like that, just like that. And it'll go down into and catch that paper on fire. Now I'm going to go ahead and feed some oil to this thing. Because you want your oil to kind of start heating up a little bit. So you don't want to feed a lot at the beginning, just enough to kind of get something going. Okay. Now we're going to look down inside this thing. And I've got my papers burning. 
which I don't have a lot of papers. I'm starting to get some oil down in there. Can you see the oil? You see oil down in there? Yeah. Okay, so that oil, and we don't have the turbo air on yet, right? So we're just kind of letting that oil catch a little bit, and we're going to turn the turbo air here on just a minute. And then we'll show you the effects of that. So turbo air doesn't come on quite. You got to make sure your oil is kind of heating up. You got a kind of a good flame going there, and you can kind of play with it. Like I could plug this in right now, and oh, you hear that turbo effect? You're starting to hear that? Ooh, that's actually like a rocket stove. So it's drawing air like a rocket stove down in there, and then coming up the exhaust. So you're kind of hearing a swirl. Ooh. So I wanted to add this turbo on here. Cool thing about this turbo is it's got veins right here. So I can just add a little air. Until the fire gets on. And then I can pump the rest of the air to it. To take a shot of that right there. Right there? Have much air going in right now so i'm getting some heat off the tank already and you can see how the oil is blowing around and kind of mystifying a little bit but once i finish up all this all the air to it it'll you'll really see it's, it's crazy it'll, it's crazy so let me see if i can add some air and that went out the fire okay so yeah i can see the fire going down just a little bit so i haven't got quite hot enough yet so I don't want to go full, so you got to kind of regulate the oil and the, and the air. But once you get things really running good, you can crank up the oil and you can crank up the air. I'm going to cut the oil down just a little bit. And let that get a little hotter. Just to see what they work, some D 
diesel salamanders. And um, and then I cranked out my furnace, my oil furnace, and like this, but kind of a little bit different. And it, it did so much better than the salamanders. And so hopefully that answers your question. Okay, on top, I didn't tell you about the top. So the hole on the bottom, there's a six inch pipe coming out of the top. Hole on the bottom, six inch pipe coming out of the top. Are you still good? And then eight inch, I run eight inch up that just fits right over that six inch and you don't have to do any sealing or anything, then you're done. Because it doesn't it doesn't leak right here. Uh, and you can look at that out there, it's it's, it's burning clean. Hot water heater tank, by the way. 